In this video, we're gonna take a look at a Purple Ink by Noodlers, Concord Bream. Now, as always, there's timestamps down below so you can skip around, but if you've got the time, it really does help me out for you to check out the entire video. Also, down in the description is a link to the Purple Ink playlist, so if you wanted to see more, you can find that there. I'm an ink guy, and let's get into the first writing sample done on 90 GSM Claire Fontaine. There's no bleeding, but there's quite a bit of ghosting that I'm seeing here on the right edges and at the top with the stub. Now, we have no feather, no spread, no shading for the stub. Only a couple dark spots show up for the extra fine, and a couple of darker spots show up on the medium. Now, as far as tone variation, the extra fine and medium are right about the same tone, and the stub is only slightly darker. The extra fine took five seconds to dry, while the medium took six. The scrubby for both do show some color variation, and we do get that light peppering in there, and a smear test you could recover if you smeared while you were writing. To have a range of experience with this ink, all of the writing samples were done with a Jinhao 159 with a 1.1 stub, a Jinhao X450 with a medium, and a Jinhao X750 with an extra fine. Then a fountain pen revolution Japer was inked up, used for a day, and used to take the notes for this video. The next writing sample is done on 52 GSM Tomoe River. No bleeding, but we do have a fair amount of ghosting on this very thin paper. We have no feather, no spread, and no shading whatsoever. Now the extra fine is a little bit lighter than the medium, and the medium's a little bit lighter than the stub. The extra fine took eight seconds to dry, while medium took nine, only nine seconds on Tomoe River. The scrubby for both are showing no color variation. We're not getting it in the writing, and the smear test I do not think you could recover if you smeared while you were writing. I agree with Vita. There's a lot to learn by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. A line of ink is put down, and then it's put in the water for 10 to 15 seconds. And we see a very light covering, but very even covering, of this purple all the way up until it's gathering at the top. Now the one on the right that was allowed to dry for 10 minutes, that light purple is forming a line at the bottom while it's bonding with the paper very quickly. It pushes up very evenly. Now that very even distribution through a chromatography shows that it's bonding while it's moving. And the rest of it is gathered at the top. But I do expect a bit of resistance here. The next writing sample is done on 80 GSM Rhodia dot pad. We have no bleeding, but we have a lot of spots where it's gone quite deep into the paper, and this is not a usual thing when it comes to Rhodia. So it's something to be concerned with in that this is a little more of aggressive ink, but I don't see in the writing part outside of the stub where it would stop you from using the back of the page. We have no feather, no spread, no shading in any of this writing. The extra fine and the medium are both the same tone, just a little bit lighter than the stub. The extra fine took six seconds to dry. The medium, six seconds to dry. That's not normal. I don't normally see them have the same time. Now the scrubby for both give us no color variation. We get none in the writing and the smear test you could definitely recover if you smeared while you were writing. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink could be expected to perform on the page, and more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. This smear is allowed to dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, I feel very safe using this in a note-taking situation if I need to go back and highlight because it did not budge. Now, water actually did much more than I expected. I didn't think this was going to really move it out, but it's moving all of that, you know, or half of that ink, but there is quite a bit of it. So in the chromatography, the second one, when we saw some of it move and some of it stayed, that's exactly what we're seeing here. Pen flush is absolutely removing this from the paper. Now, I did have to use pen flesh to get this entirely out of the pen, but I didn't have to work hard to do it. The one-third bleach solution is absolutely destroying this ink, but you're not gonna need it to get it out of your pen. The next writing sample is done on white lines paper. 
we get a lot of spots where the ink is coming very deep into the paper. Now, none of this is coming through the paper, so it's not corrupting the page underneath. But I do believe that this means that you would not be able to use the back of the page because I can practically see all of it. These are just the spots that were a little bit darker. So there's no using the back. Now we have no feathering, no spread, we do get little bits of shading that show up in a couple of spots in the extra fine. And the same thing happens in the medium where we get a few spots that are darker so it shows a little bit of shading. The extra fine took one second to dry and the medium one second to dry. Now the scrubby of the extra fine is showing a little bit of color variation, that peppering of shading that we're seeing, but we don't see that happen in the medium scrubby. The smear test, you can't smear it, so you got nothing to worry about. For the inks tested, the average viscosity was 2.5, with a realm of normal from 2.1 to 2.9. Noodler's Concord Bream has a viscosity of 2.38, so it's normal. The next writing sample is done on Apica CD Notebooks. We get a bunch of spots where it is very deep into the paper, not through the paper, not corrupting the next page, but for someone like me, I would not use the back of this page. It does not mean that it would stop most people from doing it. With the right pen choice, you're not gonna have this kind of an issue. No feathering, no spreading, no shading, no color variation. They are all the same exact tone. The extra fine took three seconds to dry. The medium took three seconds to dry. The scrubby for both are showing some color variation, but it's not in the writing, and the smear test you could definitely recover if you smeared while you were writing. For the inks tested, the average dry time was 17 seconds, with the realm of normal being from 13 to 21 seconds. Noodler's Concord Bream has an average dry time of 13 seconds, so it's normal. The last writing sample is done on Lamon paper. Another paper not known to be fountain pen friendly, so this as performance is not the end of the world. It means it, you can't use the back of the page. I couldn't. Maybe you could. But it doesn't touch the page underneath, so that is, to me, when it comes to inexpensively produced paper, a very good thing. Not a good thing, the tiny feathering that occurs all the way through the stub, which also spreads a little bit. The extra fine also has tiny little feathers and spreads a little bit, but only to about a fine, very manageable on this paper. Medium has feathering and has spread. Now, all of this feathering is not the end of the world, really. It's just something that I wouldn't go for. Like, as I finish up my Limon paper, I probably won't get any more of it. We have no shading in any of the writing, and we have a little bit of tone variation. The extra fine is only a little bit lighter than the medium, and the medium is only a little bit lighter than the stub. The extra fine took one second to dry, and the medium, one second to dry. The scrubby for both show, well, the extra fine shows a tiny bit of color variation, the medium shows none, but neither of the writing showed any. And the smear test, you can't smear it, so don't even worry about it. Instead of finding inks that look like Noodler's Concord Bream, I'd prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. I decided to go with a green ink by Papier Plume, their IV Green. Now, if you'd prefer a different complement color, then down in the description are links to those playlists. So what do I think of Noodler's Concord Bream? I had expected a brighter tone. This is a very dusty, light purple with a slight blue lean to it. I don't know how I feel about the tone. Currently, I feel nothing, which normally isn't a good thing. So what nib and pen will give the best writing experience with this ink? It has shown that it can be a little bit aggressive and it has shown that it can shade. I believe that using a dry fine or extra fine will help you get the shading and keep any aggressiveness that this ink can have under control. I hope you got something out of this video and in the next video, we're gonna take a look at KWZ's Brown Number 4.